and welcome to Sweet Tea and Thread. Um, this is our episode six, and I'm Shay. And I'm Bethany. Thank you to our returning viewers. We appreciate you watching us every time we upload. And hello to any new viewers. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That just lets us know that you like us, that you like our content. Exactly. Yeah. And go ahead and leave us a comment if you have um, anything you'd like to share with us. We'd love to hear from you. Yes. And I have something you can actually comment about. Um, when you have a ball of yarn, a cake, or the um, you know other yarns that are already pre-wound, um, where do you like to pull from? Do you like to pull from the inside? Do you like to pull from the outside? I'm an inside puller. I pull from the outside. <laughs> <laughs> and so we'd like to know. There's no right or wrong answer. Nope. We're just curious. We just find that interesting. Uh, you know, we were talking about knitting socks, and some people like uh, double points, some people like a uh, magic loop, and some people maybe, like nine inch circulars. Some people, and some people do it all. <laughs> so that may be a, a, a question to comment on at another time. But yeah, so where do you like to pull your yarn from? The center or the outside? Yeah. That's what we want to know. Um, we are going to start with finished finish objects. objects. Yeah, and we're, we'll start with what I'm wearing. So if you have been following us for a while, you will know that I've been working on the daily sweater. It's, the pattern's just called the daily by Andrea Mowry. Shay originally test knitted this for Andrea Mowry and she did it out of a Plymouth Viento yarn, which is like an alpaca blend. It's an alpaca and bamboo blend. It's mm -hmm. so luxurious. It's, so we knew that we wanted me to have a version of it too. Yes. So I went with a cotton version just for people that kind of have like a wool allergy. It stays as a sample here in the store and I can wear it occasionally. <laughs> yeah. But I did the cotton version so people would have another option and this is the Plymouth Forget-Me-Not cotton. So just to review kind of the basics of how I did the sweater, I knit the size 4. I have about 9 inches of positive ease I think, I looked it up earlier mm -hmm. today. Um, I got gauge with a size 8, which is really small compared to her needle's suggestion, but yeah. it's just how I got gauge. I'm yeah. a very loose knitter. <laughs> and I knit the pattern exactly how it was written. The only difference is I just added this extra little pink stripe in here um, just to add an interest to it. I knit the sleeves again how the pattern is written, and they ended up being like a three-quarter length sleeve on me. Whereas they're more like a long or a bracelet length sleeve on most other people. Yeah. Mine were about down to mm -hmm. uh, middle of my, and of course I like to pull all my sleeves up. So, yeah. so I mean, if I knit this pattern again for myself, I would probably, I mean, I knit this for myself, but yeah. <laughs> if I knit it for me, not as a shop sample for me, then um, what I might do is I might just add a couple of extra stripe repeats for the sleeve. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'd necessarily make the ribbing any longer. I kind of like this length of ribbing. Um, you know, I wouldn't do like a whole arm up here of ribbing, but right. I would just add a couple extra stripes. So I used, I'm trying to think, three of this green color. That's kind of what I started with down here. So this was considered my main color. Three of this, two, Two, well, it was three. seven all together. Seven all together. Oh, yeah, it's that's right, because it was three of the green, two of the gray, two of the pink. Because mm -hmm. what ended up happening was when I did the sleeve, um, I didn't have quite enough pink to finish this stripe on this sleeve and do a whole stripe on this sleeve. So there's still a lot of pink left over. Right. But, I mean, I figure a hat. Yep, and then you knit your hat so. with the leftovers. And that's one of the nice things about, you know, knitting for yourself. And uh, you can adjust to what you want. You can make your sleeves longer if you want them longer. You can make your sleeves shorter if you want them shorter. I'm a three-quarter length yeah. girl. And you can I would have done the mine differently. You can decreases out if you don't want it as tight and that kind of thing. Right. So. I, I might have done mine differently, except I had to knit to her specifications. We could change the length of our sweater. Um, but she wanted to know, you know, how it was going to turn out the way she had written it. So, um, but 
that's fine. I'm I'm a pull my sleeve up person mm -hmm. anyway, so. And it's a great pattern. It it's really is. Really well written, and it's a great beginner sweater. It's knit from the bottom up, so I mean the construction is fairly straightforward. Um, I won't go into details just because I don't want to <laughs> spoil the pattern, but bottom up you yeah. split for the sleeves. You but pick also. Up for the sleeves. This yeah, this would be a good time to say that's going to be our next knit along. Yes. Is this sweater. And so, you know, just keep a watch out on our Facebook page. It'll be announced. Um, we'll probably podcast before then. I'm not sure how long our timeline is going to be. Right. But Facebook's going to be the best place. Or right. you can follow the store's Instagram. Right. And, we'll and post about it there. on Facebook, just look for Thread and like us and, you know keep up with our, our post and watch for when we're going to get that started. Yeah, we're thinking about yeah. middle of September. Yeah. So you kind of have a timeline to work with. And yeah. So we're super excited about it. All right. On to, um, well, I have one finished object. It's going to need a partner. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Guess what it is. <laughs> yes. A sock. Um, and this sock it's my usual for one of my fellas with a little short uh, cuff. Um, it is done in the earth worsted yarn. Um, mm -hmm. so that's and similar. yeah, and it's just, I, I, I just love this earth yarn. It's just, it has a great hand, it has a great feel. I've enjoyed everything I've made with it. I've made several uh, pairs of socks out of it and my children love it. So um, the next sock will start with the yellow and um, I'll show you that next time. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see, cause it, they're gonna be fraternal twins. Yeah. Uh, they won't be identical twins identical. Um, in this which yarn. Which is fun. Which is fun. I, like I, I understand that that's match. a thing. <laughs> Unmatched socks is a thing. So. Some people hate it. It drives people crazy. Yeah. I love it. I think mm -hmm. it's fun. Yeah. Because then you kinda, know that it's on purpose right you know? and then you can get dressed in the dark and don't have to worry about <laughs> matching anything <laughs> if you knit your socks the exact same way every time yeah exactly I that's don't. true that's true i but. don't so i have to find my matching sock all right and then sticking yeah. with the earth yarn yeah I've, I made this a long time ago. I don't think we've shown it yet, but mm -hmm. no. this is the sock head hat. And this was knit out of Earth's sock yarn. So you can kind of see it's similar to the unique fingering and the unique worsted that she made her socks out of, but it has I don't know, like a longer stripe repeat? Yeah, it's a longer stripe repeat. And also this has um, like 25% nylon in it. Mm -hmm. So it's their it's their sock yarn. I mean, yeah. they call it merino sock. Whereas so, the other is just uh, pure merino yeah. with no uh, nylon or in it, anything in it. So. so the fun thing about this though is when you do like a larger circumference with this yarn, it micro stripes. And then you can kind of see up here with the decreases as I've gotten smaller, that stripe kind of gets a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. Let me just edit it. It's, it's a cute hat. Fluffy pom pom. I actually yeah. wore it one day. Mm -hmm. I had a very bad, bad hair day. <laughs> yeah. And I had to run errands after I left work. <laughs> and so I threw this hat on and I was running errands around town and a lady walked up to me and she was like, your hat is so cute. I love it. And I'm like, Thanks. You know, it's nice it's when good. people come up and compliment you on your knitwear, and you don't have to tell them that you made it. I mean, if you want to impress them, you can. I mean, but... I would say, well, thanks. I made it. <laughs> I didn't think about that. She was kind of yeah. like there and gone. So, right. but mm -hmm. yeah, I I got complimented on this hat, so I felt pretty good that day. And then on to the big reveal that. <laughs> 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 our uh, um, butterfly shawl knit along. Today's the final day. Guess who's not finished? You're on the cast off. <laughs> I, I am Today's casting off. Today's the final day. Yes, okay. I will have it finished. To the end of the day. If I have to stay up till midnight. 
Yeah. <laughs> Eleven fifty nine. You won't have to stay up that late. Um, I would have to stay up two whole days to finish this. <laughs> <laughs> what section are you on? I have no idea. I don't think I, I did twenty eight and at, uh, and twenty nine last night and did that I last little. Think, well, see, I took some this of it morning. Out. I took some of it out. I think I'm like at twenty four, twenty five. Oh. Yeah. You're further back than I thought. It's kind of bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry too. School started. Yeah, school that's my started. Excuse. So school started. That is my excuse today. That, that's an adjustment. Well, getting back into the rhythm of school and yeah, having to show up with stuff, homework, all that fun stuff. And you know how they say college is fun. <laughs> It can be. It can be. Yeah. It's a lot of work, though. Because <laughs> you're time managing on your own now. You don't have a parent to sit there with you and <laughs> be like, okay, now we're going to plan out our whole week. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's, your, it's up to you. <laughs> so, yeah. School started, and I'm I'm going to get there. Give me another week, and I'll have it done. <laughs> you're going to show it to me. I'm afraid my needles are going to fall out if I pull it this way. But, all right. Yeah. So, here we are. I'm still on too short a needle to really. I'm still on the same needle size that I had last time. I even wore a top like that I thought I can wrap this around my neck and y'all can see how great it's gonna look. <laughs> but now I'm afraid I'll stab myself. <laughs> That'll work. There you go. I'll let you kind of talk about yours again. Well, cause she, again, sticking with the earth yarn. Yeah, That's what she it, used. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Yes, I used the earth yarn. I used a uh, unique fingering and uh, harvest uh, fingering for my, the harvest is the solid and the unique is the variegated. Mm -hmm. And um, I really do love these colors. I'm real pleased with the way it's turned out. And I'm on that very, I, I am on the cast off. So you can see the little she's even got a little bit look at this look at this yep it's a little There's baby bit of it cast off mm -hmm. and what cast off is this it's called the russian cast off yeah one of the ladies so. that was participating in the knit along mm -hmm. reminded us about that because this is how she cast hers off yeah it's a it's a real stretchy uh cast off but it's basically you know knit two stitches then knit those two stitches together. Then you mm -hmm. knit another stitch, knit those two stitches together. Yeah. Uh, kind of thing. So There's tutorials and, galore yeah, on it's, YouTube, I'm sure. <laughs> it's uh it and it is, it's pretty stretchy. The um the one we have that's a sample in the shop that I got from Earth uh yarns. Mabel's it's just is a it. yeah, Mabel the one Mabel is modeling for us. Um is just a regular uh bind off. And, it's a uh, lot tighter. It is, yeah. It's a lot tighter. Like it so has you'd, no give. Right. So. So you'd have to, you know, be mindful um, to, you know, bind off loosely. Yeah. Use a bigger needle to bind off loosely. Which I never like to do. So, but I thought I, I would try this uh, bind off. And I, th I think I'm going to like the edge that it's making on mm -hmm. it. And once it's and, blocked, it's going to mm -hmm. even out a little bit. Because at right. first, it looks a little bit too loose and almost like a chain just kind of sitting on top of your work. But once you block things, that just kind of allows the stitches to shift into place and just kind of lay the way they want to lay, even some of the tension out. And blocking things makes it a lot better. So I can't wait to see that done and blocked. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I'll be in the store Tuesday. Maybe I'll have to check the temperature. <laughs> but maybe I'll wear this it. This will not so. be done Tuesday. No. I promise you. I'm, off, be, from, I'm mm -hmm. off for Labor Day, but this will not be done Tuesday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can tell yeah. you that now. But mine, I'm using, again, Bamboo Pop for the solid and Barocco Medina for the variegated. And it's turning out really beautifully. I love how really the is. red pops. Mm -hmm. Because when I started, all I saw was this up here, this kind of greenish. It's like, I mean, that's okay, but when is it gonna get to the red? Mm -hmm. It's gotten to the red. Yeah. So mine might actually end up being a little bigger. 
Yeah, I think because the yarn is bigger, but it's not going to be just a whole lot no. uh, bigger. The pattern calls for fingering weight. Both of these are like a sport light DK. Mm -hmm. So mine's going to be a little bit bigger, but I mean, I still love the fabric that I'm getting and it's very drapey. Yes, it feels great. So it really does. And this it is going to be really fun to wear even in the spring. Mm -hmm. Um, when it's starting to get, you know, we've gone through winter and we're going through spring and it's really fussy because it's like cold in the mornings and then hot in the afternoons. Right. But this will be a great lightweight shawl that, you know, I can kind of carry around when it's not in use at the store. Right. <laughs> but we did have our cast off party today and we really appreciate the ladies that came out. Um, we to, had so much fun. Yeah, to celebrate that with us. And all their scarves are looking beautiful. We actually finally took a picture. <laughs> Every time we meet up, we uh -huh. after everybody's left, we forgot to take a picture. And I'm sure, so, like, as time goes on and more people finish their shawls, yeah. we'll continue to put out, you know, finished object photos. Right. So it'll be exciting yeah. to see how everybody's turned out. Because everybody's is unique and different. Yeah. So. so I think that's it for us today. Um, we have a little video uh, uh, at the end of this. It's a little shop tour, and we hope you'll enjoy it. Bethany will be your host. <laughs> I'm your tour guide. Your tour guide, yeah. Welcome to Thread. This is our shop tour. Uh, we'll start out over here. So over here we kind of have our new fabric section. We have a couple of our samples. We have sewing and knitting samples kind of everywhere as well as quilts that we hang on the wall. And then we also have our Fat Quarter Lands over here. Fat Quarter Lands where we keep all of our quilt weight cotton uh, fabrics. Anytime we get new fabrics in, we cut Fat Quarters and they go over here on the Fat Quarter wall. So anything that you can find over here with our quilt weight cottons on the shelves, you'll find in fat quarters over here. And then right over here, we have our table, our kind of fret table. This is where we keep some of our class projects, you know, that we want to show examples for the classes that we're teaching. We have a couple of quilt patterns over here, um, some knitting kits. And then over on the stage over here, we have more knitting kits. We have our wrist rulers down here, as well as some hand spun from a local spinner. And we have more quilts hanging up on the wall, as well as our cocoa knits accessories and knitting notions over here. Down here where we kind of start our fabric off, we have knit fabrics, as well as a few rayons kind of tucked in the corner back here. And then if we move down the wall some more, we have a few more knit fabrics. These are birch knits. They're 100% organic cottons. Um, we have our garment making fabrics. So these are all of our wovens that are great for garment making. They can be linens, cotton, blends. Um, we also have our Christmas collection in right now, so a few of them are kind of hanging out over here, but we get Christmas fabric in July and it's typically gone by December, so <laughs> we have all of our Christmas fabrics in. These start our 100% quilt weight cottons over here, so this whole wall kind of covers all of your quilt weight cotton needs. We have K Facet Fabrics, we have Robert Kaufman, Riley Blake, Moda, you name it, we pretty much, you know, have a little bit of something here. We also have shelves up here that house, like, books, so we have a couple of our knitting and sewing books, some quilting books are down that way. We also have our pre-cuts for quilting, like, such as layer cakes, as well as some jelly rolls. And then, over here, we have our winding station, so when you know you buy a skein of yarn, we'll wind it for you. Um, we have what we call our kiosk in the middle of the room uh, with some yarns on it. We try to keep yarns together by type. Um, so this kind of over here, we have some of our, you know, our 
Barroso, we have a couple of Malabrigos, some wolves, stuff like that. Soft runners are down there. If you keep coming this way, we have our wall of earth yarn, as well as some little bands here with some extra yarn in it. Um, and this is the Barocco Medina that I'm using for my butterfly shawl. So we have that kind of right here for you. And then if we go back this way, we have a little section off right here that is our quilting patterns. There's some more on this other side. We have all of our sewing notions here. So we have needles, scissors, pins, you know, we have some covered buttons things along that nature. And then back here is our AccuQuilt section. So if you are a quilter, AccuQuilt is really great for you because it makes cutting out your pieces a lot easier. These machines are great. There's three different sizes. Um, this one is electric. We have some hand crank versions. And then these are all the dies that will cut out your quilt pieces for you. And it is supposed to be 90% more accurate than cutting out with a rotary cutter, which I can attest to because I'm not good with a rotary cutter. <laughs> <laughs> so then if you kind of take a peek back here, you will see that we have our classroom set up. We do offer a lot of different types of classes, whether it's sewing, quilting, knitting. We have pretty much, you know, any kind of class you can imagine rotating out between the months, different types, but this is our classroom section. We have a cutting table back here. We can set up all of our sewing machines on the tables when we're having sewing and quilting classes, so it's a great space for that. And then over here, this is our pattern wall for garment patterns. We have women's patterns as well as children's patterns here. Um, anything you can imagine. Dresses, skirts, shirts, a couple of jackets and coats. We have our sail fabrics here, which, you know, kind of have moved all over the place, but right now they're kind of back here on the back wall. And then we kind of get into the children's heirloom section. So this whole wall is kind of our inspiration wall. We have a lot of different examples for smocking, heirloom sewing, as well as just everyday um, children's clothes and we have a bunch of fabrics over here that's great for children's sewing. We have our Batiste's broadcloths, uh, the seersucker, which gets changed out for corduroy in the fall and winter, some cotton prints, some, um, we have some lovely, beautiful flannels that are great for baby blankets and clothes, some beautiful checks, as well as some baby prints and some florals over here for little girls' dresses, kind of like this one, which I think is kind of cute. And up top, we actually kind of secretly stash our uh, knitting kits, some more of them. So we have our Appalachian baby kits up here, as well as some blanket kits. And we have our big tower of DMC. If you're looking for DMC thread, we've got the color for you. <laughs> Over here we have some of our quilting templates and rulers. We also have our notions for our knitting stashed over here as well as some crochet hooks. Um, we also around the corner have our section of knitting needles. We do try to keep a good variety of knitting needles. So we have double points, there's some straight needles, interchangeables, some fixed circulars, and then we also have some interchangeable circular sets over here, as well as some more little notions, some fun little lotion bars, our little soak turntable we have here. And then if we go over here, we have, I'll step back over here. So right now we have our August calendar up. Every month that changes. This is our class calendar for the month of August and as you can see it's kind of full. September's is going to be even fuller. We typically keep our calendars over here 
so we have August and September. We try to stay a month ahead so that you can plan ahead for your classes that you want to take here. We have our little button station here. We have mainly buttons for children's clothing because that's what we find people come in here for the most. And we have a couple of like the pearl buttons for heirloom sewing. We have another big cabinet that we have full of yarn. So we have Barocco Vintage, Plymouth Viento, Appalachian Babies, and Barocco Modern Cotton, as well as the Plymouth Forget-Me-Not Cotton, which is what this sweater is made out of. We also have our thread over here for all of your sewing and quilting needs. And we have our big giant, this is brand new, our big giant roll of batting. So if you need batting for your quilt, we have a big roll of it for you. And then over here, this is my favorite wall. This is our hand dyed wall. And we kind of organize this by weight. So we have some of our singles and sock bases over here. We have Erin and Worsted Weight, DK and Sport. These are some more sport weights that are in braids, uh, the new earth cotton yarn that we just got in, and then we have some minis and some more um, fingering weight down there. And so we carry a small selection of hand dyes from like Hedgehog Fibers, Big Sky, and then my yarns are also kind of sprinkled throughout in here if you're looking for a knitter's dream yarn. And we also have our big cutting table right here. This is where we cut all the fabric. We have a couple of extra little things down here that you might need for sewing projects like elastic, some interfacings over there and things like that. And we are back at the beginning. So we're back at the front door. We appreciate you joining us for Sweet Tea and Thread today. Our tea is from McDonald's again. <laughs> we were trying to do better and do our own. And I looked at Bethany and said, I totally forgot tea. <laughs> I know. And then we were like, oh, but we can go down to Sweet Basil because that's yeah. where we got it last time. And they were closed. Yes. They close earlier on Saturday so, than they do during the week. Yeah. So I um, ran over to McDonald's. Yeah and got tea but because because we can't do sweet tea and thread without, without our sweet, sweet tea, tea. <laughs> <laughs> so but thank y'all for joining us and you have a good day bye 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 mm -hmm.